Hello, welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. If you like your spring weather dry and sunny, you'll like this 10 day trend because the indication is that high pressure will remain close to the British Isles over the next 10 days, leading to a lot of dry and sunny weather. But there are always exceptions in this country. And for northwestern parts of the country, Western Scotland and Northern Ireland in particular, well, we could see cloudy skies, outbreaks of rain, and a breeze at times. And for southeastern parts of the country, that's where we're expecting the warmest temperatures. But there are some signs that we'll also see some quite humid weather at times. And with that comes the risk of thunderstorms, particularly the early part of next week. But on the whole, and certainly on Thursday, sunny skies for many places. From Shetland down to the Isles of Scilly, in many places, we'll see unbroken sunshine and light winds. A very pleasant day. Temperatures in the southeast, 20 degrees, a bit cooler there in the northwest, where we'll see some fair weather cloud build up and a bit cooler for North Sea coast. Now, with clear skies and light winds overnight, Friday morning will be a chilly one in some sheltered countryside spots. Well, temperatures dipping close to freezing, a touch of frost as we begin the day. In towns and cities, they won't be quite as chilly, but after that fresh start, those temperatures rise quickly because it's another day of virtually unbroken sunshine on Friday. Just a bit of extra cloud and a bit of breeze coming into the northwest and some additional cloud around some southeastern parts. But otherwise, for many central areas in particular, another day of blue skies and warm temperatures. And that's how we begin Saturday with high pressure slap bang over the British Isles, a lot of fine weather. Again, some cloud around some of these southeastern areas, a bit more cloud coming into the northwest, but in between, lots of sunshine. So if you're getting married, for example, on Saturday afternoon, or if you're heading to a football match, it's going to be a very pleasant day. 22 degrees in the southeast of England with those sunny skies. However, you'll notice some additional cloud coming into the northwest there, associated with a weather front which is going to push cloud and rain into parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland for the second half of the weekend. So uh, not quite as settled as we end the weekend in the north and those outbreaks of rain accompanied by a cool breeze. But for England and Wales, we keep a lot of fine weather on Sunday. Now, at this stage, there are some uncertainties in terms of how far south this weather front will sink and therefore how much of England and Wales will be affected by cloud and rain as we close out the weekend and go into the start of next week. And at this stage, there are three main areas of weather across the Northern Hemisphere, across North Atlantic and Europe. There's the cool and unsettled weather across northern parts of Britain. There's this high pressure close to the southeast, giving a lot of dry and fine weather. But there are also these thunderstorms across central parts of Europe. Now, we've had a lot of thundery activity here recently. And although they are staying away from the UK on Sunday, well, there are signs that we could see more of them as we go through next week. So those three main areas of weather are separated from each other by the jet stream, fast flowing current of air high in the sky. And to the north of the jet stream, that's where we've got the cool and unsettled weather pushing into northern parts of the country by Monday. And to the south of it, that's where we've got this big ridge of high pressure. And we don't just have highs and lows in the lower atmosphere. We've got highs and lows high up in the atmosphere where the jet stream flows. So we've got what we call an upper low to the north of the jet stream and an upper high to the south of the jet stream. But if you look closer here, then the jet stream comes right back down to the south of the UK again. And that's where we've got another upper low over continental Europe. And that's where we've got humidity and thunderstorms. So three main areas of weather separated by the jet stream. And if we have a look at another way of visualizing that, this is uh, one of the computer models into the start of next week. These are the three main areas of weather. So the start of next week, cool and unsettled in the far northwest. A lot of fine weather, this big ridge of high pressure high up in the sky, leading to fine weather across much of England, Wales, eastern Scotland, for example. And then these thunderstorms contained over continental Europe. Uh, this is scenario one, if you like. The jet stream does actually push away from, for a time from the northwest, leading to this big ridge of high pressure all the way from Scandinavia across the UK. So at the start of next week, scenario one, this is one possibility for the start of next week, a lot of fine and dry weather. These thunderstorms over Europe just staying 
where they are. But this is another scenario, this is another possibility. The jet stream starts to take on this fairly strange shape and it starts to wrap around this upper high pressure over Scandinavia. And this is what we call an anticyclonic disruption. What it essentially means is the jet stream then turns all the way around this anticyclone high up in the sky and contains the more settled weather over Scandinavia and essentially allows this upper low, high up in the atmosphere, to push closer to the UK, bringing with it that humid air and those thunderstorms from the continent into southeastern parts of the country. And you'll notice for the rest of us, well, the jet stream is well to the north of the UK. So really the main differences into, into the start of next week are in terms of whether we get these thunderstorms and the more humid air coming from the continent as a result of something called an anticyclonic disruption over Scandinavia or whether it stays generally fine. So this is one scenario, jet stream to the north of the UK, continental thunderstorms kept to the southeast. This is scenario two, anticyclonic disruption, high pressure kept away from the UK and then this upper low moving in to the southeast. So for the start of next week, for many places, it will be dry and sunny, but there is the risk of humid air and thunderstorms being imported into the southeast of England. And that's something that we'll keep a close eye on over the next few days. What about the rest of next week and into the start of the bank holiday weekend? Well, this uh, diagram here indicates that high pressure will actually be the main influence as we go through the next 10 days. So days eight to 10. And this chart here shows uh, the likelihood of high pressure or low pressure over the top of the British Isles. And these are the different computer model runs as we go backwards in time. So this is the most recent computer model run. And these are the days out through into next week and the following weekend. And you can see there that strong red colors indicate there at the start of the next 10 days, high pressure. But at the start of next week, the reds become a little fainter. And that indicates just the possibility of low pressure starting to make an appearance. And that's the risk of thunderstorms that I mentioned. But as we go through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the reds become clearer again. And that indicates that high pressure will become dominant once more. So out to days eight to 10, that risk of thunderstorms tends to fade away in the southeast. And for many places, well, a lot of fine weather around as we head through next week and into the start of the bank holiday weekend. In the Northwest, there's always the chance of some wind and rain making occasional appearances. But for most of the country, high pressure is going to dominate over the next 10 days. And there'll be a lot of dry and bright weather. Bye-bye.